All right. Well, thanks for sticking around. And uh, w it's amazing to have Hasib here to talk more about kind of blockchain operating system, but also what's going on in Web3 in general. Excited to be here, man. What should we talk about? Uh, I think the interesting question to start is we have lots of layer ones here. We have some layer twos. Kind of, there's a lot of people kind of launching more and more blockchains, more and more block space. I think that I think it's good to kind of inquis now. What does this mean, right? Like, is is layer ones, layer twos, is it the right kind of level of conception that people should be continue thinking and talking about, or is there like a new level that we should be really focusing on and spending time on? It's a good question. I think it's very clear that right now um, the, the meta in crypto has shifted away from layer ones to layer twos. People love talking about layer twos. It's the most exciting thing that people are getting animated by. The tokens are dropping, all this stuff. Um, but the reality is that today, Almost every single Alt L1, almost every single layer two, is basically a copy and paste of Ethereum. Right? So you basically take Geth, which is the, the default implementation of Ethereum and Go, and you stick some other consensus mechanism on it, and you call it great innovation, we've made a new blockchain. To be clear, L2s are great, L2s are very important, but it's also very clear that that's not what we're going to be doing in 10 years, is copy and pasting Ethereum infinitely many times and calling it innovation. Like at some point, as blockchains evolve, as more and more people are using this stuff, it becomes more important for us to push forward the vanguard of what blockchains can do and the amount of people they can onboard and the kinds of applications for which they're well suited. And so um, I've been thinking more and more about this rut that we're kind of in as an industry, which is that people are pushing more towards how many different ways can we copy and paste Ethereum. And um, to be clear, I think rollups are a great idea and they're an important way to scale Ethereum itself. but we also have to move past it because 10 years from now, there's no way, like Ethereum is seven years old, or coming on eight years old now. It's an eight year old stack, eight year old technology. And it's changed very little since it was first invented, right? Basically, we like doubled the gas size and we added a different fee mechanism, and now it's proof of stake instead of proof of work, right? That's basically it. That's all that Ethereum has really fundamentally changed over the last eight years. Um, but blockchains, if they're going to expand to tens of millions, hundreds of millions, or billions of users, they need to be fundamentally different. And, and in many ways, that's the task of blockchains that take fundamentally different architectures than Ethereum itself, like Nier, is it's, it's up to you guys to explore the landscape of what other things can you do with blockchains beyond just take an EVM, put a different consensus mechanism on it, and run it faster. Yeah, and I think for us, it's not even about like what usually is commonly known as blockchain, right? Which is like smart contracts, but also like how do we go the full stack, right? How do we actually connect the functionality to user in the best way, right? And obviously, like the original idea, okay, we have smart contracts, and so what smart contracts kind of did to services, right? Is like they became they made them composable, they made them you know self self running, decentralized. Uh, and uh, kind of trustless, like we need to do that for the rest of the stack, right? We need to do this for experiences, for user interfaces, for data stack as well, because actually right now everybody runs on centralized data stack, which is highly, like, highly custom per provider, and actually has different results between different providers as well, right? So like all of this right now is kind of what we at least thinking like, how do we innovate not just on this kind of smart contract level? but like across the whole stack. So speaking of data, so you are obviously a very early pioneer in the AI industry. So for those of you who don't know, the Transformers architecture, which is the architecture for machine learning that undergirds all of the crazy new developments we've seen in AI, like ChatGPT, like Stable Diffusion, like Dolly, all those things came out of this one paper out of Google called Attention is All You Need, and this guy was a co-author on that paper. And now he's in blockchain land because AI is obviously very boring. Um, but as, as somebody very close to the inception of AI, um, what do you think is going to be the intersection between what you're building now with Nier and what you were originally building when you were back at Google in the new AI space race that we seem to have entered into? Yeah, I mean, it's a very good question because I think there's different levels of intersections that we see already. The kind of a lot of the original motivation for why we started Near was actually around uh, data crowdsourcing that we were doing for our AI models in, back in Near AI days. 
And I think that will actually become more and more important, and not just because like, it's actually cheaper and more efficient way to do data labeling. It's actually because we also need to start thinking, how do we govern which data we're labeling? Right, right now, actually, there's no large alignment data set uh, that is publicly available. And so right now, when people are building models, they're actually like, kind of querying ChatGPT to get more data out of ChatGPT now. Uh, and so everybody's biasing their models exactly the same way as OpenAI has biased their models, which is like a view on the world, right? Like you can do this and you cannot do this, right? That, that data set is of what's right and what's wrong is, is built by this company and everybody's kind of copying it. So that's fundamental, like the kind of governance of data and through that of models and results and what things people will kind of see as a result of right and wrong is what we can use now as technologies to kind of collectively define and, and have like more inputs and more variety of, uh, of kind of conversation going. And I think the other side, we talked about it at the chopping block, um, is the blockchain is the environment where AIs will live, <laughs> right? Because it is actually kind of directly accessible by them, they can actually interact. And so there's a new thing, which is AutoGPD, which is a agent that runs kind of using ChatGPD model to uh, kind of give, get itself instructions, and then it follows them. And so it can actually already start using like you know browser, it can write code, it can create files, all the stuff. And it can have a, a blockchain wallet and start actually interfacing with uh, kind of crypto ecosystem. So I think that's a really interesting, where we're going to see like on a blockchain, it doesn't really matter if you're a person or a, or a, or AI, right? It's like what matters is what you bring to the table. Yeah, there's the, there's the old joke about the internet that on the internet, nobody knows that you're a dog. And on the blockchain, nobody knows that you're an AI. In the normal world, right, like if a, AIs very quickly are going to get to the point where they want to solve coordination problems. They want to solve problems that involve the use of scarce resources. And the way that we solve those problems is with money. But of course, an AI cannot go to JP Morgan and open up a bank account. Like even a crypto startup can't do that anymore. Um, so certainly AIs are not gonna be able to. And all the laws that we have around money imply that the only things that are allowed to own money under our legal framework is people, corporations, and governments. If you're not a person, you're not a corporation, you're not a government, you're not allowed to have money. So how are AIs gonna have money? How are you gonna do KYC on an AI? How are you going to do, how are you going to have an AI pay taxes? How, we have no answers to these questions. And AIs are already at the doorstep of making these kinds of decisions and acting in the world in the way that normally people with money would, would, would act. And so the way they're going to do that almost certainly is going to be with crypto. Because AIs may not be able to call up a bank rep and pass a KYC check for you know, JP Morgan, but they can absolutely manipulate a private key and figure out how to send transactions on a blockchain like Nier. And so I do think one of the places that's going to get weird over the next few years, not even like five years, I'm saying like the next year or two, is that we're going to start seeing AIs that are fully autonomous that start interacting on the blockchain. And before you know it, you might have AIs that are basically offering to pay you to do work for them. Because, I mean, ultimately, that's what human beings do. That's what we do as agents, is we hire other people to help us accomplish things. There's a lot of things that AIs are not very good at doing that humans are good at doing. And we, we like to brag about how smart we are and how capable we are relative to AIs. And AIs are like, yeah, you're right. You are really good at doing certain things better than me. Why don't you do that for me, and I'll pay you by the hour? Uh, so I think, I think we're going to see the world transform in very interesting ways once AIs get access to money via crypto. Yeah, there's actually a tasks marketplace that will be on near that Usually it would be you know, for data labeling to, for AI, but it can be also the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're, um, I'm hoping that the AIs have, uh, want to invest into funds, because otherwise I might be out of a job <laughs> soon. Well, uh, that was a great conversation, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, let the next speaker kind of enter, but thank you, Hasib, and I hope you're all kind of excited for what's to come. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>